Hello friends, I am here on board SV Felurian with John Conway. We're in Southern California at the moment. Mm -hmm. at, is this Fry's Harbor? Uh, Fry's. Fry's on Santa Cruz Island, the channel, Northern Channel Lines. Um, <clears throat> and we want to talk about John's new sails. So I guess about, I don't know, four months ago or something, you were texting me saying that he was looking at getting new sails and he was looking at a different sail maker. And I love my Rolly Tasker sails. So I was like, put him in touch with Rolly Tasker so we could see about getting him some proper, proper sails. Um, and so I put you guys in touch and mm -hmm. the process started. And what, what went into that? Like once you got in touch with Rolly Tasker? Yeah, it was really easy process to kind of get educated and and learn you know so much of what's happened in sail technology in the in the recent years it's a it's a great time to be a sailor um sales have improved a lot i've been living with the sales that are original to my 2009 uh beneteau oceanus uh, which were pretty simple cross-cut dacron sails with two uh full battens two half battens uh, on the main and they were really <laughs> they were toasted when really i was really beat up when i was on florida a couple of months ago we went sailing out here to the islands as well and we raised the mainsail and i was it felt like three thousand thread count egyptian cotton <laughs> it was like the softest dacron i've ever felt i was like these things are so toasted so um yeah and i guess that's a that's like a good segue into like i have offshore cruising dacron sails for tritea that i love and I've, I've put 6,000 miles on them since I got them. And you don't do ocean sailing. No. So you went with a different type of sail. Yeah, and that was one of the really interesting things to learn about and working uh, with Rolly Tasker and talking about the types of sailing we do. Like my sailing experience is so different from James. Um, and so when you're shopping for a sail, the kind of main categories you have to consider like number one i'd say is probably the material mm -hmm. you know dacron sails are still kind of the most tried and true yeah. sail they last a very long time uh, they're super tough they're mildew resistant they hold up well to uv uh, but there's a lot of newer stuff out there and you know i'm always attracted to super high performance things and spending a little time on race boats and you know for years race boats have had carbon fiber and kevlar and mm -hmm. all the super cool stuff um but very very expensive and actually doesn't last that long so it wouldn't be appropriate for a cruiser yeah at all um and now i think the fabric companies have started to bridge the gap between you know what you can expect out of a Dacron sail uh, and ease of handling and longevity with some of the performance uh, of modern cruising or modern laminates, racing laminates have kind of trickled down into a more cruising uh, appropriate sail. Yeah, so you're, these would be considered cruising laminates, yeah. right? Yeah, so the sail cloth that I chose is a contender sail cloth, uh, GPX Pro, and that is a polyester-based laminate. 
um, and it's done in a tri-radial cut. That's another thing we kind of get mm -hmm. into, like material and cut all are going to affect the type of sail you have. Uh, but what's the, the advantages of the contender cloth is it's a polyester laminate. It has a taffeta on both sides that gives you UV protection. Oh, cool and gives it almost kind of a similar hand to Dacron. You know, it kind of feels the same weight. It's going to handle about the same uh, on your boat. But the performance life of the sail is much longer than Dacron, as it is going to hold its shape for the life of that sail much longer than uh, the equivalent cut in Dacron. Yeah, so Dacron will stretch and these laminates do not stretch. They, they actually shrink, you they said. They do not stretch at all. Yeah, some of them, yeah, I think they the glues, they'll actually shrink a little bit over the life of the sail rather yeah. than stretch out. But they out never stretch out. out. So you never have like bellied out sails that they give you poor weather helm and all that stuff. I think, but, and then what? what's the difference, do you know, as far as longevity goes between like, what's the... What's the shelf life on these cruising laminates versus Dacron, do you know? Yeah, looking, so it's a it's really interesting subject when you're, you know, going to invest a lot of money in new sails for your boat. And you really have to think, what kind of sailing am I going to be doing? Mm -hmm. How do I want to use them? What's the my biggest priority? Uh, so Dacron still, I think, is the longest lasting sail, uh, as in it's going to stay together the longest, which is maybe... 10 years or so mm -hmm. 10 uh, years or i can't remember how many miles i'll put it yeah. on the screen right now but there's definitely like you know if you're pushing them hard every single day they're going to have a shorter shelf life than the 10 year for, for dacron mm -hmm. and in that lifetime the sail is going to still exist on your boat i.e being one piece mm -hmm. uh but it's going to lose its shape mm -hmm. uh fairly quickly so it's going to stretch out a little it's going to become less efficient and so what that's going to do to you is increase your weather helm mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to point quite as high the boat's going to heal excessively you know when things just get and you're going to lose speed like when i got my new rally taskers in hawaii i gained like a knot and a half worth of speed Mm -hmm. And when I did my test, I thought it was a fluke. I couldn't believe it. But now Tritea cruises between five and a half and six knots. But, you know, if you're sailing around the world, the most important thing for you is going to be keeping your sails together yep. in one piece. Yep. And for a, a long time, you're going to be working the sails very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And if you lose a half a knot, yeah. that's, that's, that's exactly. not going to change that's your life. Yeah, that's the compromise. <clears throat> but if you're racing around the buoys and you've got to beat your friends in the beer cans, <laughs> that half a knot is going to mean everything. Mm -hmm. So on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, you know, you have your high-end racing sails and those really expensive sails. Uh, you know, Dacron might be here and a racing sail is all the way up here in cost. And it's going to last a third of the time. Yeah, like totally. Three to five years, those sails are... They're toasted. Toast. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, three times the cost and they last a third of the time. Mm -hmm. And when they fail, those kind of complicated laminates, they don't lose their shape at all. You know, you have the same s sail. It sails as if it was brand new the entire time. And then I think they just go. They just go, right? They, they delaminate or blow yeah, up. Yeah, delaminate, fall apart, or, you know, you're you're just going to explode the yeah. sail while you're So what kind it. of life are you looking at on these sails? For so the, yeah, the Contender CDX Pro sailcloth kind of bridges that gap. So probably not quite as long as Dacron. Like, I'll be happy to get about seven years mm -hmm. of, you know, the kind of cruising, coastal sailing that I do. And in that time, the sails are going to be like they are brand new, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll get the, the performance boost of the material um, mixed with some of the longevity that you expect from a Dacron, and the price is also kind of in between. Mm -hmm. So for a sailor like me, uh, who's not sailing around the world, I'm mm -hmm. not doing long offshore passages, um, I know I'm never going to get caught in 60 knot winds, Yeah, uh, it was easy to choose my material you know the contender cloth 
Um, it also comes in white or gray, which mm -hmm. looks really cool. The gray looks really cool. It's very, uh, very classy looking. Yeah, and the way they assemble the sail, he use different weights of the cloth, and then you choose the, the cool gray color it's called. Um, you know, they, they build the sail, they engineer it to distribute the loads, and so you have a heavier fabric where you need it, and it's a little bit darker color, and lighter where you don't. Oh, cool. And that uh, cuts down a weight and everything, too. Yeah, yeah, so you get the the lightest strongest sail with the best shape possible and it looks cool which is yeah. a plus for me like it looks, a, awesome. it looks like a real kind of racing sail mm -hmm. also uh, with a boat this contemporary too it looks slicker i think these sails would look ridiculous on a vintage yeah. boat <laughs> yeah you they would be it. very strange but on this boat they really look at home like you know they look like they belong on a boat this contemporary yeah, I'm never going to have like old school braided lines and, yeah, yeah. and wooden blocks. It just doesn't go with the boat. And mm -hmm. I think that this cloth, this sail, uh, really works well. Um, so I kind of knew the material. I wanted to bridge that. And then, you know, cut is a different thing. Like I think you have uh, cross cut, mm -hmm. uh, which is, that's the oldest sail design there is, is a, you know, cross cut woven sail. Uh, very durable. Uh, it's also one of the most affordable designs, but it doesn't hold its shape the longest. But it's you know it's it's very strong. Um, my laminate sails come in a tri radial design, uh, which you see in a lot of more performance sails. Uh, you can do a dacron in a tri radial as well, and you know that's that classic. Everybody kind of knows it from spinnakers, right. where you, mm -hmm. you know, kind of have that triangle fingers coming in from the three corners of the sail uh, and that helps really define the sail shape keep it from stretching and give it a lot of strength um, so a tri-radial sail is going to hold its shape longer and better than a cross-cut sail and then a tri-radial laminate you know it's kind of kind of doubling down on that and uh, then, like your head sole what size head sole did you get mm -hmm. so my boat uh, stock comes Dacron with a 140 Genoa. Wow, that is massive. And then uh, a pretty big main, like I said, that had uh, two reefing points and two half battens and two full battens. And uh, mine's traditional rig, not a, a furling sail. So, you know, I had, I forget how many. Furling main, so yeah. Mean. No furling yeah. main, but mm -hmm. yeah, furling Genoa. And I was kind of putting together with the sailing that I do like how can I get the most performance um, and also how can I get for me performance isn't just speed it's ease of handling because mm -hmm. I'm a, a single-handed sailor at least half the time yeah um, so what's gonna make sailing easier for me uh, two things that I chose to do was uh, reduce the size of my Genoa you know from the factory specs where I sail instead of a 140 they go in with a 130 just because I get a lot of high wind in the Channel Islands I have to reef pretty frequently and you know you don't want to be reefing your Genoa all the time they, mm -hmm. they stretch a little more that way so I think a little smaller sail is gonna serve me well it's plenty big enough too plenty and big. you have a it's a low <clears throat> cut too it's not yeah. like I have a high cut almost like a Yankee cut on mine which I like because it's like when you shorten sail then you really shorten sail so it's making you know your 100% is actually less than 100% for me, with ocean sailing, a big swell is coming in. You want that. You want to be able to get that sail small quickly. And also being able to see up through it. But where with you, you're making fast passages back and forth between mm -hmm. the islands. But you're also contending with serious winds in this area. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's not just San Diego, like bay sailing, light air all the mm -hmm. time. I get it all. I sail in light air. Um, but we get some pretty windy days mm -hmm. and, you know, going around point conception you know 25 knot days are, are really common that's mm -hmm. not an exception that's pretty normal yep um but so far the genoa is amazing i've actually had that on the boat a little bit longer um and my mainsail some of the things i wanted to do differently than what i had was uh going with a full batten main mm -hmm. um full batten ultimately with a stack pack uh, is just for a single-handed sailor being able to get the mainsail down yep. uh, is really key you know being able to just drop the sail 
Um, but when you have a full bat, and the full battens uh, do a couple things, you know, when you're reefing, reefing single-handed, uh, that will stop the sail from flogging, you know, and you just kind of let the sheets out and then have to go through your reefing process solo. It's a little bit slower than when you have a, a crew of five. Yeah on a race team so it can take a couple minutes so to preserve the life of the sail and resist flogging i wanted to have a full batten main and another thing that that does is if you combine that with a stack pack you know some kind of lazy jack sail bag uh, it's very easy to drop the main sail and it'll kind of stow itself with the battens on the boom and you can zip it up and you're done and that's also like the most efficient way to make sure you the least amount of uv interacts with the sail mm -hmm. because like a stack pack it's easy to like spend a couple days and like well i don't want to put my cover on because i'm only here for a couple days and you end up you might yeah. have your cell exposed for a week because you'd never put your thing on where a stack pack you can just yeah. zip it up like here at anchor i haven't made or commissioned a, a stack pack yet but so the sails just tied on the boom we're here all day not going to take my lazy jacks down get the sail cover out and mm -hmm. put that on but when you have a, a lazy bag you just zip it up and it's done so yeah good point to extend the life of the sail mm -hmm. um, but one downside to full battens um, is because they're so long and the sail's heavy uh, the weight will kind of put a lot of friction and stiction on your st uh, sail slides mm -hmm. and actually make the sail pretty hard to come down it's very easy for it to stick in your mast groove and i was having trouble with that already with your uh, old sail with my dacron mainsail mm -hmm. that was a two plus two two half battens two full battens you know i it it would not fall down i i really had to pull it down and having a crew helped and you know with any windows hitting it it, mm -hmm. it actually took a little bit of effort to get that sail down um, so I knew if I was going full batten, you know, a pretty common solution is to get a Tides Marine Strong Track. Mm -hmm. So I actually put an insert in my mast uh, that's plastic, and then you have big stainless steel slides, and it's a super low friction uh, Yeah, that's deal. like butter, man. Those things go up yeah. very easy, and they come down like lightning fast. It's yeah, like really. Annoying. That makes it... He's yeah. still getting his tuned. It's like kind of got to find the sweet spot so he's still getting that tuned up but it's a it seems like a really good option for yeah i think so we, we need to raise my track up a little bit to get the you know, most ideal trim on the sail uh, but that was a really easy thing to work with really tasker as a sail maker with two you know that's not their brand but i was like okay i want to use this thing mm -hmm. and like yep we've done a million of those like uh we'll be able to um, so on loops for your slides and you'll mm -hmm. just put those on you'll be good to go and that was super easy yeah um yeah so the the whole package was a, a pretty easy and collaborative experience mm -hmm. in my education of what all the options were you know for my sailing and really being honest with what you're doing like i think that's how everybody gets the product they're ultimately most happy with yes yeah. you don't think about your aspirational sailing or, or what's the coolest mm -hmm. that's sort of like what, what's actually going to work the best for you and they were really able to steer me in the right direction of what's good for my boat not overkill you know not mm -hmm. underselling it and uh get the most satisfaction and best performance for the amount of money you're spending for yeah. like still good value so i think i've really hit the sweet spot for me um even though that might be different for you and is certainly different for a tritea yeah, like for sure we can't have the same sales no no and it just wouldn't make sense we could but it wouldn't it wouldn't be as efficient for either one of us you know what i mean so mm -hmm. that's why it's good and like i said like everyone at Rolly tasker is fantastic like Rolly tasker was like a legendary sailor in his own right not some just like you know company that came yeah. out of thin air he's they've been around he's he's been he was around forever the company's been around a long time and there's a reason why, like, some of the baddest sailors out there run a really tasker. So I'm stoked that you got those yeah. sails. And uh, so is everyone in my marina, like all the hardcore sailors, yeah, yeah. like, oh, really Tasker. And yeah. Got so it's, many, like the ones who've done circumnavigation, yeah. it's like, oh, I was in, I've been to their sail loft in Thailand. It's yeah. amazing. Like, they have yeah. the best loft ever. Exactly. So, so Ro really Tasker, we love you guys. Um, so let's go up on deck and check out the sails.
If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.